be number four, very, very important, very important. And that is, it illustrates potential career paths. So that's okay. how they can progress within the organization. Within the exactly. So, um, kind of one of the news stories this morning was the CEO of Jewel passed away, but he started off as a, uh, a clerk, kind of like in the parking lot, gathering up the carts, and he rose up to be president of the company. You know, there are lots of stories like that where you know the the the, the, the CEO of the company started. Um, <laughs> This is really a bad example, but um, Kurt Warner, right? Right, MVP quarterback, okay. right? In the NFL, um, uh, not drafted very high. In fact, not drafted at all. Um, he was drafted by some teams and then let go. And he was off bagging groceries. I don't know what kind of a grocery store it was, but bagging groceries. And I forget who called him up, but you talk about um, ascension. And th this guy, I think he won two Super Bowls, uh, Super Bowls, one with uh, two different teams, um, St. Louis and then the Cardinals, I think. Um, nevertheless, look, um, I don't know how we got off on that path, but Starting off in a battle on rung yeah. or being rejected? The, 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 the organizational chart can show potential career paths. And I do know if it, if it, it was important in the past generations, but it's extremely important with our younger generation that they can see that where they are, that their employer is affording them if they work hard, do their thing, well, um, they can they can see where they could possibly go, and the reason that people leave companies is less about the money, and more about number one, do they respect their manager? Remember that that'll be another session. Um, people leave if they're not getting the kind of guidance and education development from their manager. Number two is if they can't see, much less talk about, what's the potential? Where where else could I go? Um, right in in this organization. So uh, it is important to have an organizational chart that shows this. Now, sort of like one last uh, point on organizational charts because then we're going to get there um, to our cutoff. Um, People will talk about flat organizations, uh, vertical organizations, uh, matrix organizations, although matrix is like a 20 year old uh, thing. Um, in, in my mind, I don't like extremely vertical organizational structures where you've got, you know, one person leading another person who might be leading another person. And I'm like, um, the span of control is like just way too heavy. Right. Well, it's kind of like that, uh, what's it called, telegraph, where you tell one person and you tell some, somebody else and the story gets um, changed by the time oh, it gets oh, sure. started down the line. Sure, sure. That can happen in any situation, but, you know, really vertical, uh, where you've got single reporting relationships in like two or three layers, that's just not productive. It just, it's just not productive. You've got to increase the span of control. If somebody is really capable to manage another person, then they should be capable of managing two or three others. So increase that span of control, mm -hmm. right? So you don't have such a vertical organization. Do I like flat organizations? I have a bias towards flat because um, I don't like a whole bunch of hierarchical, is that a word? Hierarchy. A whole bunch of hierarchy. Uh, but that's just, that's obviously my bias. So a flat organization is uh, president and then five VPs and not, and that's, and that's the organization. Yeah, and well, that's, that's essentially, you know, the leadership of the organization. Um, uh, but we have to make sure that the people reporting to those VPs, that, that that stuff turns out to be relatively deep. We don't want a whole slew of managers um, horizontally. Um, 
reporting to those VPs because that that's we're just not getting any scale. We're not getting any efficiencies from something like that.